Hi there, and welcome to the Curious Collective podcast, conversations designed for the conscious community to bring awareness to those holistic practices to live your best life. So tap into the knowledge and wisdom of our guests to extract what you need to heal, transform, and live as your true soulful self. I have the absolute pleasure today of introducing all of our listeners to Angela, who is from The Joy Hut, and she's a mind, body, energy coach and practitioner. So welcome, Angela. I'd love to hear a little bit more about you from your your perspective. Hi, Katie, and hi, listeners. Thank you for having me today. I really appreciate the opportunity to to, um, share with you guys. Um, So, yeah. Um, So basically, I am founder of The Joy Heart, as you were mentioning. So The Joy Heart uh, is a very holistic uh, coaching and practitioner um, service. And basically, I just love to help people to be able to really get past a lot of their emotional and psychological blocks, especially during times of transition and changes, because I find that when people are going through things that feel really unfamiliar and uncomfortable, that's when a lot of our stuff can come up. So um, I went through my own journey of lots of changes in my own life, and um, I discovered lots of different techniques, tools, and um you know, gain some experience in what really worked for me. And so now I just love to share that with people that I come across. Oh, I love that. And it's sort of like you embodied those tools for yourself and it worked for you. So then that there's that sharing that's happening. I, I always love that because it adds more depth for the person coming to you and working with you as well. Yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes you really need to know exactly what things feel like to be able to really, you know, authentically say, hey, I do get you. I do know what you're going through. And, um, and yeah, just to have somebody there in your corner is really important because there's been many times where I, I actually had to do a lot of it on my own. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that I didn't have supportive community or supportive family because, you know, I do have a very loving um, environment. However, it was more that, um, you know, I, I just felt like I needed something different. I needed uh, some, something that was not my reality at the time and everybody that was around me, you know, was the reality at the time that just didn't feel like was vibing with me as, you know, where I wanted to go. So, um, so yeah, there was lots of stages to my own journey and uh, coming out the other side. And I'm sure that there's more to it as I get older and grow and expand all the time as we do anyway, there's always a learning. Um, but yeah, I find that I'm in a really good space now. So I feel like it's it's great to be able to share my experience and I'm quite mm-hmm. open with you know my own experience as well so that people really do get Um, that feeling that, you know, they're not the only ones that are going through what they're feeling. Mm. And that's that I feel like that you're talking into is like your connected soul tribe, that those that you can be in their presence online or face-to-face or whatever, you don't even need to speak because they just get you. They just know. They can just feel into what you're going through. That's always such a beautiful thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, just somebody to say, hey, yeah, I I, I do get you Mm. in and just to have that witnessing, I think, is really important. Yeah, the witnessing. That's a yeah. good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. So what is it that you do within the Joy Hut? Well, there's a quite a number of things that I do draw from nowadays with my experience. So um, originally I started the Joy Hut just as a way for people to get support through using tools such as neuro-linguistic programming, which is NLP, um, but also coaching and counselling on those levels. And then as I progressed through, I found that, you know, really connecting the mind and the and the body was vital so that we had a real well-functioning energy system. We and and sorry, we I were able to also be able to align with what truly our heart speak is. Mm-hmm. So between the mind and the body is our heart. And so what I found was then I would start to implement a lot of the emotional work into you know the coaching that I was already doing so I really help people with the emotional blocks and the emotional stresses that they've got at the time of what they're experiencing and then we often discover that a lot of that comes from you know a lot of the conditioning we've had when we're younger or just experiences that have compounded to uh, really make us who we are today 
and reminding somebody that they're not their experiences is a big part of that you know and really getting that identity to shine through again of who they really are moving all the labels yeah because I think that we get into the flow of just you know being what we think we should be yeah so a lot of it is stripping back that and really activating that core essence of who you really are again and that is through the emotion that is through the thought processes and that is through you know the way that your body even responds to what's going on in your environment as well so it's quite a holistic way of looking at you know um, an experience and situation that people are having challenges with So then finding the strategies to be able to help them to be able to get through that, come out the other side Mm -hmm. so that they're really moving forward in an authentic way and they're really aligned with their values and what's a priority for them. They're also really aligned with their heart. It's not just about, you know, doing what inspires you intellectually, but also what inspires you from a passionate point of view as well. Mm, That sort of really soul purpose and the passion. Yeah. Yeah. And things like emotional freedom techniques, which is commonly called tapping or EFT, um, you know, that's part of the process as well, which really helps to honour a lot of the emotions that we go through at the same time that we've got challenges um, so that the body can learn new ways of responding differently so that we're not recreating stresses over and over again and being in that real sympathetic nervous system cycle, you know, fight, fight, freeze. So This EFT fascinates the heck out of me. I'd love to speak a little bit more into it now. I've heard about it a few times and I've seen people doing it, but I've never really sort of learned about it. Can you explain that a little bit more, the EFT? Yeah, so basically it's a technique that has, it's, it's been around for oh, over 40 odd years now. People don't actually realise it's been around that long often. Um, but it's a it's like an energy psychology technique where we're really activating a lot of the mental thought processes so we're activating parts of the brain at the same time that we're soothing the body um, with some processes that somatically calm the body down so for example when we're in high stress mode uh, you know the body might start get to get a little anxious you might start to get a little sweaty you might start to have heart palpitations and you know feel quite heated so that's your body responding to what's going on mm. but your body responds to what's going on often as a result of the thoughts that we have about what's happening so when we look at those two things together the cognitive thinking plus the emotional response and we use the strategy of EFT that simply is a relaxation technique Mm -hmm. to be able to tap on different parts of the body to send different messages back to the brain so that we activate more of a parasympathetic relaxing response Mm -hmm. while we're focusing on an issue that normally would stress us out yeah wow yeah it makes sense it makes sense that you're doing that like the calming is that touch as well as the, the the other parts of it as well yeah makes sense to me Yeah. And um, you think about it on a very simple, basic level, you know, Mm. right? So you've got, say, a a cheetah chasing a zebra. In that world, the zebra might, you know, go into flight and run away for a bit and then it might suddenly stop and play dead. So it freezes. So it's kind of in sympathetic stress mode anyway, right? Um, Because it knows it can't turn around and fight the cheetah because the cheetah is going to win. So it'll play dead and it'll be laying there for a while until the opportune moment where it might be able to run away. Mm. However, when you find that the zebra, if it has a chance to run away, you find after a traumatic response like that, that the zebra actually starts shaking off. Like it it starts to shake, shake its arms, legs and body and just kind of quivers all over for a little bit. And then it just goes on, you know, a few hundred meters up the road and it just starts eating the pastures again and yep. completely forgets that the cheetah <laughs> is chasing it. Even though oh, she- I love nature. <laughs> the cheetah might even still be around, but it yeah. just completely moves on to the next moment. Mm. But the problem with humans is that we have that sort of mammal part of our brain, a very primitive part of our brain, which does the fight, flight or freeze. But then we also have this part of the brain that's more evolved so it's that thinking part the prefrontal cortex Mm. if you will which gives meaning to a lot of what's happening around us so we start judging what's happening 
So if we've had an experience that has been quite dangerous or threatening or it feels like it has been to us, like, you know, a cheater chasing us, often we can start to recreate that experience over and over again because we start thinking about it and thinking about it and we kind of take these experiences with us, but we don't shake it off. We just think about it. So EFT is a great way to actually help the body to shake off these emotions. Oh, I love it. I love it. Why yeah. do I have the Taylor Swift song popping into my head? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's good. one of my favourites to just, yeah, you know, dance around the house and just to yeah. kind of like. Ooh. I love the example you've used, though, because, you know, often we can reflect back on nature. There was a previous person I had on the podcast that was, you know, who does Chinese medicine. It's all about nature and observing nature and bringing us to our natural state by observing nature. And your, so your example there just makes so much sense. And yeah, I'm looking forward to getting out of here and just shaking it off. My kids have been driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah. And what they've actually found is that the tapping itself is the key ingredient for that shaking off part. So there's been studies that have been actually done um, where they've taken like a meta-analysis. So they've taken lots of different studies and analyzed them independently. And it's indicated that the tapping component itself is mm -hmm. the very key ingredient. So you know, it's impossible for it to be a placebo effect. Yeah, yeah, which I've done really lots cool. and lots of studies on it. Yeah, really cool. So the tapping is vital. So when you talk about Chinese medicine, EFT is kind of like psychological acupuncture. Yeah, wow, I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it all different parts of your body that you tap on or is it, is it just like from the chest up? So the main, there's, there are a lot of different points, but the main points are from the upper body up to their, mm. past their face and their head. Um, and this, we do a setup on the side of the hand. So those parts of the body are actually the endpoints of the meridians, which are oh, the yeah. main meridians in the body. So what we're doing is we're stimulating the meridian system as well as sending that impulse feedback that's a soothing feedback to the brain. Um, to you know dump different hormones to actually mm -hmm. release you know um, dopamine serotonin all these nice mm -hmm. feel good hormones rather than dumping the cortisol and the adrenaline yeah, yeah. when they're in stress mode oh I love that and so you're so knowledgeable around this I just love listening to you talk about it what actually got you to the point you're at now like what started your journey to learn the NLP and all of the subconscious work and your EFT yeah, so um, as a young girl, I was always really interested in how we function as a human being. And I really was obsessed with the foundations of fulfillment and happiness. And, you know, um, I wanted to live a really happy life as much as I could and take the, you know, suck the juice out of everything. Mm, yeah, I like that. <laughs> and my middle name is Joy. So oh, I. Perfect. I sort of thought, you know, after I got over the fact that it felt like an old lady's name that I didn't really want for a while, I was like, you know what, there's something in this because that's how I feel. That's what I'm aiming mm -hmm. for every day. But then I had a lot of these challenges come up. So I, um, I was quite an active young girl. I was doing a lot of sport. I was quite um, great with, you know, what I was doing intellectually. And then um, suddenly my world completely changed because I had injuries and illness. So I had mm -hmm. experienced chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. Um, at the same time, going through a lot of toxic relationships, breakups, um, you know, a long story short down the track. Um, now I have a, a beautiful 11 year old boy and um, I've had to navigate my way through many challenges with relationships yes. and health <laughs> along the way. So I was personally looking for support and help and things that were really going to help me because my body really took over mm. and I was in chronic stress mode for years and years mm. and it didn't matter what I seemed to do and try to think my way around it my body still would react and I'd have mm. lots of different symptoms and eczema and all sorts of things happening so I sought help and then that's when I came across um, you know doing my own personal development work so that's when I learned the NLP etc and then um, I also found, though, that my body was still reacting and I knew that there was a lot of an emotional energetic imbalances going on that I hadn't really got my um, self around yet. And I, I didn't really know what was going to really shift those at a very deep level. Yeah. And then I came across uh, Dr. Peter Stapleton, who's a psychologist, uh, well, she's the head psychologist now at Bond University. And I was seeing her as a patient for a fair while and 
um, then she introduced me to EFT tapping. And it was about two years before I actually started taking it seriously yeah. and realized what a gold mine I'd really walked mm. into with this. Um, but after consistently using it and realizing the, the speed and the effectiveness of such a technique, and I could feel the changes straight away. Oh, wow. And I could feel, and my body was clearing things. Was listening. Up. Like eczema disappeared. And, you know, oh, you was- were listening to your body. Yeah. Well, yeah. And sort of communicating. And my, yeah. And my mind body connection started happening a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And I started coming back into my body. And then because of the amazing opportunity that chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia gave me to really get to know my body, mm. I think that that helped to contribute to me to know what it felt like when I felt good as yeah. much as when I felt bad. Yeah. So, yeah, those the polarities. Yeah. yeah, those challenges were so awesome to experience because I don't believe that I would be uh, able to do what I do now without mm-hmm. having to go through that myself. Yeah. Um, and now I get to teach people all over the globe with the beauty of um, the internet and yeah. things like that to be able to connect with people and really help them to be able to have that mind body connection mm-hmm. in a way where it's very holistic and they can make different choices and they can use these tools and techniques to really empower themselves in the daily life not just you know when you go and you see somebody and you get the help that you need while you're in consultation but in between because I wanted to create a consistency for others because I needed consistency yeah so yeah that's how like that integration period like the tools to take away and weave into their daily practices to help them to yeah well you said it empower them yeah and I think also the education you know about the knowledge of how are we set up as human Mm. beings because we as much as we sometimes don't want to go there we still are very primitive we still have that part of our brain that it's going to do what it's going to do but how we kind of bring those two parts together it can be a challenge and so I believe that a lot of the techniques that I use help to bring that all together so that we can really step into the strengths of how we're um, you know structured and how we function as a human being but also as a soul in this beautiful vehicle yeah. around on this planet so it's a bit of a dance but you know we just got a tango and um, <laughs> <laughs> you put it so well like yeah just and and the new, the name of this podcast is the curious collective again I draw back to say like I encourage the listeners to get curious do the dance see how it goes for you so so on that like if people wanted to know more about the work that you do or even like just the EFT what advice would you have for them Oh, look, I think the main thing is um, really acknowledging that it's okay to be where you're at and Mm. to really be open to trying everything on and keep what works and discard everything else because you can get into that snowball of trying to do all these different things and only, you know, touching the surface. But when you find something that really does you know, resonate with you and it really feels like it's shifting things at a deep level, mm. you've got to stick with it. And often other people around you won't I won't get it, won't understand it either. But you're doing this for you and you've got to make yourself a priority in that. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think that it, it, the beauty of, you know, I guess having experience from a lot of different modalities and the different areas of health and well-being. Um <clears throat> I I think that that helps to be able to, you know, help more people in the sense that it's not one size fits all. Yeah. So when you can find what works for you and you do that and it feels good for you, that's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's definitely not one size fits all. Like everyone is so different and and we're all here to experience different things, aren't we? And, And we don't need to know what that is. Like, there's a need to be like, what am I here to experience? It's like, just be and you know like you just said so beautifully make yourself the priority and that will drop in for you yeah exactly I think sometimes we can we can sort of get all wound up about you know having the experiences that we're having and that stresses us out even more which kind (laughs) of compounds the the stress that we go through on a daily basis anyway so when we can accept that this is where we're at and be open to 
you know, really moving through it and finding the community and the tribe that is supportive in that is, yeah. is vital as well because, you know, there's going to be times where it's scary. There's going to be times where you feel completely alone. But when you've got your gang, it makes it much it's easier. Posse. Yeah. Totally. Your soul posse. <laughs> I I most I just recently did a training um where Angela and I were in it together and that's how we met and it was so beautiful we were like a little mini soul posse (laughs) I know I miss seeing you guys every week so yeah we definitely need to make sure we catch up more often (laughs) yeah so listeners down in the comments wherever you're listening to this whether whatever platform it's on there will be some information about the beautiful Angela so if you feel called to reach out to her please do so Is there anything else that you'd like to share with the listeners before we say goodbye? Um, I just want to say thank you for the space and the time to be able to, you know, listen in. And thank you, Katie, so much for the opportunity to share my message because um, it's people like you that help me help others. And Mm. I think when we all work together this way, it's just such a beautiful experience. (laughs) And I'm getting all goosebumpy and juicy now. So, yeah. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you so much for your time. And um, hey, we might get you uh, on again soon in one of the group trainings to do some some tapping. That would be amazing. Yeah, by all means. I'd love that. That'd be awesome. Awesome. Bye, listeners.